Hi. In this video, we demonstrate how to provision a virtual machine on the Google Cloud platform. On the cloud.google.com page, we make sure that we log into our account. Then we navigate to the Cloud Console. And this is where we land on the home dashboard of the console. Then from the navigation menu in the top left corner, we scroll down to the compute section. We hover over compute engine. And then from the side menu, we select VM instances. Now this is the page that allows us to manage virtual machines. But since we have none created, let's create a virtual machine. So let's click create. Now we may immediately see that we have several options available to create virtual machines. But we will choose the first option, the default one to create a single virtual machine instance from scratch. This is also the option that allows us to configure most aspects of our new VM instance. So let's start by assigning it a permanent name. Let's call it test VM. And then since labels are optional, we are going to skip the labels section. And let's proceed over to region. Typically, we would want to select the region that is either closest to us or closest to our clients. So in this case, let's pick something that is closest to us, US Central one. And let's pick a different zone, US Central one C. Now as we make our selections, we may notice that the monthly estimate value is constantly being updated when we select more expensive or less expensive uh, VM properties. Now this estimate assumes that the VM is running nonstop for an entire month. We can, however, save on costs by stopping VMs when they are not in use and then starting them only when we need to perform work. Next, the machine configuration section allows us to select the machine family, the machine series and the machine type. The machine family allows us to choose between memory optimized or compute optimized um, machines, but also the general purpose machine types, which is the most cost efficient and is suitable for most workload types. The series allows us to select the CPU technology. And we have a first generation N1 versus more recent second generation CPUs N2 and E2. So let's stick to N1, the first generation T CPU types. And now let's select the machine type. The machine type allows us to pick a CPU and memory configuration specific to the series that we selected above. Now, if, for example, we consider making this virtual machine part of a Kubernetes cluster, we would want to select N1 standard two with two vCPUs and seven and a half gigabytes of memory. We can also configure the boot disk and the operating system. So let's select change. And instead of Debian operating system, let's pick Ubuntu. And for version, let's pick a recent release. We will pick Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. And for the boot disk, let's increase the size to 15 
gigabytes. Select. And now at the firewall section, I can also allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic. If I was to run a web server on this virtual machine. And before clicking create, let's scroll to the top and revisit the monthly estimate value. Now, if the estimate cost is acceptable, then it is safe to proceed to create. Otherwise, we should revisit the region, the zone, and the machine configuration sections to select less costly options. So let's scroll down and select create. It usually takes a little bit for the VM to be provisioned and to become ready. So it seems that the virtual machine is ready. And now we can access it through a web secure shell client by clicking on the SSH button right next to it. This will give us a terminal which allows us to interact with the VM's environment. This takes a little bit to initialize. Okay, it is fully initialized. So let's verify the release of this uh, uh, Ubuntu virtual machine. So cat Etsy OS release. And it is exactly what we've configured. Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So I can exit out of the shell. And I am back at the console. At the top of the console, we notice that we have several options to change the machine state. So right now the machine is running. But if I select the machine, I see that I have options to stop the machine, suspend it, or uh, pause the machine, reset it, which is a reboot, and delete the machine. I can also start the machine if it is being stopped or resume it when it is being paused. Now keep in mind that all data and all configuration is persistent between restarts and we do not incur any charges while the virtual machine is stopped. Now the delete option, however, can be used when the VM is no longer needed and deleting the, the virtual machine uh, will also delete all of its data and possibly all of the volumes the storage volumes associated with this virtual machine. So at this point, let's delete the machine. And as the machine is being deleted, let's talk about homework. Yes, you heard that right. I said homework. So the method we have just seen allows us to create a single virtual machine instance which may not be the most desirable for an environment where reusability, shareability, scalability, and replication are key infrastructure requirements. So with that in mind, the Google Compute Engine provides another method to create virtual machines through a combination of instance templates and instance groups. An instance template is an instance configuration that can be saved, modified, reused, or shared with other users if needed. So let's just hit create an instance template. We will not create it, we will just walk through it. And at the first glance, 
the instance template configuration is identical to the configuration of the virtual machine instance. You have an instance name and machine configuration with family, series, and machine type, boot disk with operating system, and then finally the firewall. The instance group, however, let's hit create instance group and we will just walk through the instance group allows us to create one or multiple virtual machine instances from the same template. And these machines can be managed as a single group. And you can also configure auto scaling through its supported auto scaling feature. Now, for the purpose of this exercise, we are not going to configure auto scaling. So we have two options to disable auto scaling. Either we pick the don't auto scale option, or we scroll down and we select the delete auto scaling configuration. Okay. Now, once you familiarize yourselves with the VM instances, as homework, I invite you to explore the instance templates and the instance groups. So first start by configuring a template, then move on to configure a group. Now you will notice that the configuration options for both templates and groups closely resemble the VM instances configuration. So good luck with the homework. Should you need any assistance, feel free to explore the course forum for solutions or post a new discussion. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.